Hi, I'm Danny Nightmare. And I'm Monster Face. And we're Horror Addict. And it's the full moon, so don't you dare touch that dial. Because we're going to review bad channels. Touch that dial? Hey, what do you want from me? I'm a toy from 1992. Alright. Speaking of 1992, this film was directed by Ted Niccolo? Niccolo? I don't know. I mean, some of the actors don't even seem to know his name. I can't say enough about, uh, what's his name? Ted. Ted. What's your last name? Nicolau. Whatever. He's a great guy. But he also directed Terror Vision and Subspecies, so we're definitely off to a good start. This movie's score was composed and performed by Blue Oyster Cult. That is badass! Yeah. It's got three other, like, crazy bands in this movie, too. We'll get to that in a little bit. This movie is a part of an expanded universe that Full Moon kind of created. Yeah, like way before that was like the cool thing to do. Exactly. Dollman makes a cameo in The Stinger, and right off the bat we solved that polka music mystery the security guard was listening to in Demonic Toys. Yeah, that always bugged me. See, this movie stars a rebellious DJ named Dangerous Dan O'Dare, who in the very beginning has chained himself up. And he's not gonna be unchained until someone guesses the right combination on his padlock. Yeah, and until then, they're not gonna stop playing crazy polka music. And it's driving everyone nuts, but everyone keeps calling in because if they win, not only does the polka music stop, but they get a free car as well. Dan O'Dare is played by Paul Hipp. You might remember him from Waking the Dead, but I always think of him from the One Tales of the Crypt episode on a dead man's chest. And while he's pulling this polka stunt, He's being covered by the local news, and he's about to be interviewed by top reporter Lisa Cummings. She also looks a little familiar to me. Yeah, at the time she was an MTV VJ. Plus she had a role in Chopper Chicks in Zombie Town. Eh. But I always think of her from that shocking scene that she had in Problem Child 2. Hey girls. We've got work to do. <laughs> That was hot. Yeah, literally. Well, finally the padlock number is guessed and the secret numbers are... Uh, a one and a two and a three come to mind. You're kidding me. One, two, three. One, two, three. Why didn't anybody think of that before? You mean I win the car? One, two, three. Lisa starts to think that this whole stunt was actually a scam. Seeing how the anchor man won was such a stupid combination. But while Dan O'Dare's trying to convince her otherwise, they witness a UFO landing. Well, she witnesses it anyways. Yeah, I guess he didn't see it or didn't want to believe it, but eventually he has to believe it because aliens! Not those aliens, but... <laughs> those aliens. Yeah, well you got your big asteroid headed alien and his little robot cyborg. I mean, it does have like a organic brain it looks like, so. Okay, at this point you're thinking, this is supposed to be scary? No, this is definitely more of a sci-fi horror comedy. Though there are parts that aren't funny and aren't scary. <laughs> that was the best take they could get from that guy, huh? I guess. <laughs> However, overall I do enjoy this film. I want that to be kind of out forward. Before we really get into spoilers, I would say, see it. It's got one hell of a rockin' soundtrack, plus it, overall it's a pretty hilarious movie to watch. Yeah, a lot of fun shit came from 1992. Fun shit is a good word for this movie. See in the small desert town Pahuda, the aliens have landed to take over Dangerous Dan's radio station because they like girls from music videos. You know those type of girls where they're strutting and posing all over the car in a sexy bikini or cut up jeans? While the band is like in some factory that only makes sparks? Yeah, those type of girls. 
And the best way to catch them is to lure them into what they believe is music videos with bands like that. They take over Dangerous Dan's radio station with him and his uh, co-worker Corky trapped inside. Green Moss has sealed them in shut. There's also some flying little UFO thing. It eh, kind of reminds me of those creatures from Batteries Not Included. Your batteries are not included. I don't need batteries. I just work my pump and my little hands. All the good toys had batteries. Hey, and when people call in, they somehow manage to track them down with their alien technology and then they send a band to them, but only they can see it and they feel like they're in a music video while everybody else just kind of helplessly watches them dance around hysterically. And their first target is a waitress from a truck stop. Her name's Cookie. Is that Charlie Spaulding? Yeah, Charlie Spaulding, who's at the time was kind of like a poster girl for Full Moon. I believe I remember her in Puppet Master 2. Yeah, that's where most people remember her from. And they send the almost all female band Fair Game. Exception of the singer. Yeah, but they're a rockin' 80s hair band. And Cookie can't help but get up on the counter and shake her thing. Well, they kidnap her and she gets teleported into a little jar making her like about 12 inches tall. Hey, that's about the size of Doll Man. Later to the cute but airheaded bunny. They said it's a very cutting edge for the time, kind of a grunge band to her high school. And she can't help but rock out. Yeah, Nirvana, they're not. No, but oh well. Meanwhile, the sheriff, Lisa Cummings, and some doctors are dealing with the alien phenomenon that took place outside of the radio station. And even though dangerous Dan O'Dare is trying to warn people over the radio station, most people still think it's just a gag and the sheriff certainly doesn't believe it. Lisa Cummings and the doctors are the only ones that suspect that it might actually be true. Especially when Nurse Ginger is kidnapped by our third and final band, Psychotic Sympathy. Kinda remind me of Green Jello. Dangerous Dan O'Dare at this point is just desperately telling people not to tune in. His co-worker Corky tried to even confront the aliens only to be turned into just look like a big blob of Play-Doh. But... Yeah, but I guess it's like fungus or moss. It's kinda like your nose. Ah, thanks. Way to make me feel self-conscious. And even though it took two tries when they finally got Lisa Cummings, Dan O'Dare threw down the fisticuffs. Carrying her own camera and sound equipment because her tech guys got zapped. A couple of uh, cops to try to break in got mostified as well. Are these people dead? Well, see, I don't know. I mean, Corky came back from his cocoon when some Lysol was sprayed on it. But not everybody shows up at the end, so I can only assume that, yeah, some of them died. No nudity. No, just a lot of sexy dancing from chicks who think they're in a music video. And that Lysol slash Germasol or whatever turns out to be the antidote they need. The aliens are weak to it. Even uh, Asteroid Head doesn't seem to enjoy it. After a fight with the alien that turns into a little shop of horrors from space. Feed me, Seymour. Three of the girls are saved. Wait, if Nurse Ginger's Lysol got big, then why didn't Lisa's camera get big? I have no idea. Turns out to be a pretty happy ending. Except for... Where's Bunny? Yeah, Bunny. Well, that's okay, because apparently Dollman's in the desert coming to find her. You know, they're being the same size and all, they have to be compatible. Yeah, but why does he not have a ride? It's gonna take him forever to walk there. He's so small. Remember how long it took him to walk around in the rock quarry in his own movie? Oh god, she's gonna be a old, die of old age. Well, I'm sure that Bunny and Dollman will be perfect for each other. Wait a minute. Wasn't she in high school? Dollman's cool and all, but he's he's pretty old. Yeah, that's gonna be weird, huh? Ah, uh, well, you know, maybe he'll end up with one of the other girls. Yeah, right. I mean, they all got turned back to normal size. Yeah, about that. Ah. But that's for next month's review. Dollman vs. Demonic Toys, which is the conclusion to all three movies. Cut! Thanks for watching! Hey man, I like how you put on your nose and got all dressed up for this review. Thanks, you look different too. Yeah, I got my hair cut. Really? Which one? Uh, you know jokes like that are why the YouTube struggle is real.